Welcome to the second module in the Next.js 9 series. This is where we'll cover the setup from initialization, creating your own project structure within the directory, and setting up your first hello world in Next.js. So, so first things first, we want to check out our uh, Next.js and GitHub repo. You don't have to start this way, but I kind of like to walk through two different methodologies. There's another one on the site that you can check out as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and clone this for now. So we're going to jump over to the terminal and we'll do uh, git clone. And then we've got our GitHub repository name in here. Once we do that, it should link everything up and clone it in. Once this is complete, all you have to do if you have Visual Studio Code installed already, you can just go code and then HMP, HA's books, boom. So this should pop open. You'll notice I have Peacock installed, which is an extension that I recommend. I'll throw a link to it in the uh, YouTube description and hopefully on the tutorial as one of my tools. Um, but what that does is add some settings that will put this red color on your VS Code just so that you can keep track of where we're uh, watching on the screen. Let me bump up the uh, screen size here a little bit for you guys. Okay. So now what we can do is start walking through the tutorial. And what you can do is copy the, um, the commands that are in the terminal, or you can just create. So the, the first one, for example, is gonna be um, creating the pages directory. So the way you can do that in VS Code is by clicking a folder and calling it pages. Now, if I were to delete this, what you can also do is open terminal, cd into DJ's books. So when you start to see commands into here that are highlighted like this. So we've already created our directory, we've moved into it, we cd into it. Um, so I'm a little out of order here, let me jump back one. But So the make pages, for instance, we can go like that and do make pages, okay? Now we see that appearing over in VS Code as well. The next command that we're going to look at, we're going to install some dependencies. So again, you can do this here, or what I like to do is I like to close down my terminal so I know which, which window I'm in. If you hold Control and tilde, it'll actually pop up a terminal in VS Code for you. So that way you're in the same window. At this point, we can paste that new command in, and this will just add in React and Next and all of the requirements that we're gonna need to go forward. So let's go ahead and do that. At this point, you might need to grab a coffee or something. It takes a little bit depending on your uh, connection speed. I am lucky enough to uh, have fiber to the house, so you get about 200 up and 200 down, which is awesome. Now that all of those dependencies have installed, you should see a package lock.json. What I'm not seeing, and I thought would automatically be created, was a npm package. So let's do something real quick. So there should be a package.json. So let's do this. Let me bump this up a little. npm init. So yep, we're cool with that name. We'll call it that version. You could say next.js tutorial, AGMPs. Don't really need a entry point. Um, so we'll just leave that be for now. So this Git repository, if you want to change it, we can change it later and I'll show you how. For now, I'm going to leave that um, there. So now we should have a package.json, okay? So here are all of the dependencies that we just installed. Here's Firebase, Next, React, React DOM, RxFire, and RxJS. That's everything that we're going to be utilizing throughout this course. So the next thing that it says to do is set up the npm scripts for development. So if we go back to our package here, we'll take a look. And what it has 
is scripts that just has tests. So what we're gonna do is take tests and replace that whole thing with this. So now at this point, we should be able to spin up our server. Because we add these scripts in, we can now do npm run and then one of the scripts name. In this case, it's the dev command from Next.js. Uh oh, floral, floral page not found, but that's cool. So what we what we have over here is we know the the server is up and running because we're at least getting this 404 page. So let's go ahead and throw in um, this first page, and we can do that by going to pages and just creating a new one, and say index.js. Or sorry, <laughs> that's the old verbiage. I better change that. So it's index that TSX. Paste that in. Let's see what happens here. So now we get our hello next.js. Pretty sweet. And all we had to do was throw this little command in. I believe I'm not a React expert yet, but this is just considered a React hook. So I did throw in a TypeScript piece here and it's commented out because um, TypeScript, as you can see, the switch to a TSX instead of a JS file. So all of our files now can be um, TypeScript. It comes immediately with uh, Next.js 9. So let's also update our Babel RC. And that is because of some of the things that we're going to end up doing with our material UI. So let's add that in. Let's try this again. MPN run dev. Uh oh, looks like we have a TypeScript issue. So let's go ahead and throw in this NBM install like it's suggesting. So We've switched over from JS to TSX. I guess I jumped ahead a little bit, sorry guys. Um, I think technically if we were to go back and rename this, it will still run with the hello. So because it really doesn't matter if you're using TypeScript or not, we just plan to. Okay. And we are going to update this whole thing so it uses a full function component. So now we should have hello next.js with the wavy slap end. Boom, check that out. So you are officially a next.js developer. Stop this course, move on, just kidding. Okay, so on to the next part. Let's see here. Now this I, I kind of detailed out in the video we walk through it without the git part of this. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is initialize it just like we have in the lesson again. So what I'm gonna do here is cancel the running server and I'm gonna say remove my .git file. And that will basically eliminate any changes that are happening. VS Code should start to forget what's going on. There it goes. So we can go ahead and do git init. So we'll start to track our changes, okay? So it understands we have nine files. We're ignoring some of these files already correctly. Okay, sweet. And the other things that I would add in here are, let's see here. I think, I think actually we're all right right now. Okay. So if, however, you happen to be running off my clone like I was, you could do a git rem remote remove. So let me show you how this works. If you do git remote dash v, there's nothing listed currently. So if I did git remote origin and then pasted the original, oops, <laughs> git remote add origin, now, when I do git remote-v, you'll see that it shows up. And so 
If you did happen to clone mine from the beginning, which is totally fine by the way, I encourage you to clone at any level that you feel like at any branch. So the get remote dash V at this point um, shows us that you have my origin. Well, you're gonna wanna update this on your own so that you can keep tracking it. The best way to do that is to remove. So get remote remove origin. We'll take that away and if we do that again, it's gone, okay? So that is essentially how you um, go about updating your Git repo and now you can start to track all the changes. If at any point you get stuck and you are a little frustrated, please reach out in Slack and I can help you out or other members of the community can help you out on there. This is totally a optional part of the lesson. If you feel familiar with Git, you can uh, skip this part, but I'm gonna walk through a couple different ways to set up your own Git repo and also check out so that you can get back to any module when you need to. If you find yourself getting just super stuck um, at any point, what you can do is you can add this origin or just reclone the repository. And then what you'll want to do is do um, get Okay, so now we have our master and our origin up in alignment, okay? So this should match exactly the same thing. Now, if I were to take and look at all of the different uh, branches that we have out there, we can take each one of them and take a peek. So if we want, we can do this. Um, so let's do 01, or let's do 02 dash setup. So we can do checkout, 02-setup course. So now we can take a look at what's happening um, after the initial setup, which is where we're at right now. So if at any point you wanna skip ahead, you can always just use this. And the next one, um, you can click 03 material UI. Can check that branch out and then you can go back to you know firing up your server jumped a lot i had a little bit here because we added some dependencies for material ui like this now we should be able to run dev so anytime you forcibly pull down that branch you'll always want to do npm i or npm install, just to make sure you have all your dependencies. So let's take a look now. There we go. So now we've skipped ahead to lesson three. And that's how you can skip ahead at any point or just return back um, where you feel comfortable and then move forward from there. So that's it for this setup. I hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to teaching the next one.